When we think Washington, D.C., we immediately think of the White House, Congress, and the many monuments and museums that line up the National Mall. But Washington, D.C. is more than government institutions. It's divided into eight wards that contain over 100 neighborhoods, each with their own unique identities. I'm Jose, and I'm on tour exploring some of the most popular neighborhoods in the District of Columbia. On this tour, we'll discover neighborhoods that completely reimagine the look of the United States Capitol. From the streets of Georgetown to the wonderful waterfront of the Navy Yard, we'll experience a mix of some of DC's most touristic areas outside of the National Mall. So let's go on tour and explore the neighborhoods of Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is America's capital at over 68 square miles. It's about the same size as Brooklyn, New York City's second largest borough. Washington, D.C. was created by land ceded from the states of Maryland and Virginia in 1790, chosen by America's first president, George Washington. The area benefited from a merge point of the Anacostia River, which empties into the Washington Channel along the Potomac River. Then it flows out to the Atlantic Ocean. Now this area, wasn't the first choice to become the nation's capital. In many of our ventures, we've traveled to places that held that title, like neighboring cities of Lancaster and York, Pennsylvania, the iconic New York City, then the battlefield city of Trenton, New Jersey, and eventually the area that made Congress decide that a capital district was needed, Princeton, New Jersey. There's also Philadelphia. It probably would have been America's capital. Philly's not too far from DC and has given birth to many of America's history, but many components abandoned the idea of Philadelphia as a capital. One example is the Pennsylvania Mutiny of 1783, which was an anti-government protest by hundreds of Continental soldiers. Congress vacated Philly, bringing us here to the District of Columbia and the many neighborhoods that merged to become the capital. Our tour of Washington, D.C.'s neighborhoods begins in the back alley of the capital's oldest area. The colorful, historic homes line up by the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, and the canal boat remains docked at the Grand Old Ditch. The canal is a 185-mile route that begins in this district and travels to Maryland, operating for almost a century hauling coal that came from the Allegheny Mountains, then were transported to Maryland and sent to DC. Now, it becomes a cycling and walking trail. This is Georgetown, one of the most popular neighborhoods in Washington, DC. This area was once part of Maryland and was known as the Tobacco Port. It was the furthest inland ships for travel on the Potomac River and a favorite of George Washington when he was mapping out the federal city. This is one of Washington's most touristic neighborhoods where the architecture is preserved in the colonial and federal style housing. The neighborhood becomes a wonderful escape when stepping out of the National Mall. A sight seeker delight with the traditional scenery and fantastic shops that make it a busy destination to explore. But Georgetown's biggest attraction is the amazing waterfront where the boats are in full display to welcome the changing season. Georgetown was established as a tobacco port when it was still part of Maryland. Situated along the Potomac River, it was an important mid-Atlantic trading center and the largest tobacco port in America. As I look out into the horizon, I reflect on its history, a neighborhood that was a former slaver's trading post eventually grew into a large African-American community who worked in the federal buildings. The friendly atmosphere completely transforms me into a tourist. The 
waterfront is just as crowded as the center of town, an area of the capital city that receives, on average, over 10 million visitors a year. With the wonderful weather in full effect, even social media influencers flock to the waterfront for that scenic backdrop. Visitors go on a riverside walk as the waterfront gives clear sight to some monuments and federal buildings. And if you're exploring the town, I recommend a cruise across the Potomac. This is DuPont Circle, one of the famed roundabouts in Washington, D.C. This vibrant neighborhood contains the majority of embassies throughout the capital. The vibrant DuPont Circle is the most famous roundabout within the capital. Visitors are greeted by the fountain dedicated to Admiral Samuel Francis DuPont, a legend in modernizing America's Navy. The circle is one of the best gathering places within the neighborhood, where the white marble statue sits at the center. This beautiful fountain was designed by the same architect as the Lincoln Memorial, Henry Bacon. Each figure has a representation of the sea, stars, and wind. And as I exit the base of the fountain, I leave inspired by its wonderful details. As we move around the neighborhood, we come across the trendy outdoor eateries, an exquisite architecture that only elevates the fantastic experience. This area is well known for its artistic environment and its wealthy background, as the many embassies once belonged to the aristocratic residents of the area. DuPont Circle is an affluent neighborhood that brings all kinds of visitors to its attractions. The neighborhood has been a hub for the LGBTQ community as Washington DC contains the largest population across America. But there's one attraction that leaves me curious as I see the entrance to what looks like a former station. So let's go explore this mystery. This is such a unique find. Definitely a creative way to repurpose an old train station, turning it into an art museum. Welcome to one of the most unique attractions we've encountered, a beautiful art installation known as DuPont Underground. Within this dimly lit venue, we see rows of projectors showcasing artistic films reminiscent of classic theater houses. Visitors are entranced by the powerful visuals and this one-of-a-kind experience. And as a fellow tourist, I definitely recommend taking the journey into the underground. This venue was once a streetcar station, and now we follow the voices that bring vibrancy to these walls. Streetcars were the primary means of transportation throughout the city. This station was the only one in D.C. that was built underground, extending from N Street to a connecting point on R Street. And I'm simply fascinated with the ingenuity of converting a forgotten space into a marvelous outlet. So I'm thankful for the invitation to be able to share this experience. Let's head back to the neighborhood to explore Embassy Row.
our journey into Embassy Row begins at the Spanish Steps with tours looking out into the neighborhood and gazing at the beautiful design of this connecting point. The steps were inspired with Roman architecture, creating an elegant setting as we walk up the steep hill. The steps were constructed in the early 1900s as Washington DC experienced the City Beautiful movement. With an oval shaped basin and a lion head fountain, it becomes the center attraction at the end of this series of embassies. And one embassy in particular fills me with emotion. As I'm walking around visiting all these embassies, I had to stop by the Dominican Republic's embassy. It's my homeland. So this is the country where I was born. And right in the front of that embassy is one of our most famous names, Juan Pablo Duarte. So right in front of the Dominican Republic is a free bookcase with a lot of Dominican authors. And I love this. I don't get to see this often. It's very hard to find a lot of Dominican literature. Very unique. If you stop by, check out some of our great Dominican talent. A personal detour in discovering my heritage and the bus of a Dominican founding father. Embassy Row contains over 170 foreign embassies where you begin the trail on Massachusetts Avenue and 18th Street and continue all the way to 35th Street. And one by one, the beautiful flags of countries like Argentina, Portugal, and the European Union line up the poles of these Gilded Age estates. While I observe Montenegro's red and gold flag, I truly begin to understand the visitor's allure. I love walking down Embassy Road. You get such an appreciation for all these unique flags. It tells the story and characters of the country. The beauty of DuPont brings a culmination of art, culture, and politics in a wonderfully wrapped package, similar to the mesmerizing shrine at the gates of Indonesia's embassy. A truly extraordinary exploration. Try something different and enjoy the nice weather. Here comes spring. How do you guys like living in the Navy Yard? Um, so Navy Yard is actually so interesting. So I have lived in the DMV area for many years. Like I grew up here because I was like seven. Um, and DM, like Navy Yard has grown so much over time. It's fun, um, but you know, definitely like kind of growing and very much so a sub city of DC. How are you guys? How's your day going? Good. Good? I'm having a great day, yeah. On the southernmost point of Washington, D.C. are the Navy Yards, one of America's oldest industrial neighborhoods. It was a hub for shipbuilding materials and production during the 19th century. And that industrial history made way for this Capitol Riverfront, home of the Washington Nationals baseball team. This beautiful neighborhood pays homage to America's naval history, the oldest shore establishment of the U.S. Navy and we're immediately drawn to the mesmerizing architecture as the water flows into this infinity pool. I can't help myself as I take the moment to enjoy walking behind the waterfall. What I find on the other side is that spectacular looking bridge containing such an eye-catching design. The Navy Yard is full of visitors in an environment that's more relaxed than Georgetown's waterfront, witnessing locals just enjoying their day in the park. But the main draw of the riverfront is the U.S. Navy Museum, containing artifacts like the swift boat used to patrol coastal territory. We've been on so many adventures across America, eating bagels, hot dog, and tons of pizza. And one of the few things we haven't tried is a good old American hamburger. It's a pillar to America's cuisine. 
Look at how delicious this burger looks. Fantastic. If you drive in Washington, D.C., you'll come across several roundabouts. D.C. has about 30 spread out across its neighborhood. These roundabouts were planned by the city's designer, Pierre L'Enfant, to give a feeling of a vista between each traffic circle. D.C. is mapped out with long diagonal avenues to make it easier to navigate between federal buildings. I love visiting D.C. in spring. Look at all these wonderful cherry blossoms. Spring brings out the colors of every city. <laughs> Let's go for a drive and take the full circle around the park. This system of roundabouts was meant to orient the driver when the avenue crossed the traditional grid system. Pierre L'Enfant was tasked to design Washington, D.C. by President George Washington. Pierre didn't last long on the project, but his design made its way to building America's capital. Several of the roundabouts lead to territories that extend past Washington. It's a very busy intersection, but this roundabout, something special about this one. So right here, as we take a spin, this is actually the border of Maryland and Washington, D.C. And those pillars are our border marks, state to state. In this spot right here, we're already in Maryland. Cool, this is the best roundabout. The District of Columbia is an engrossing adventure that brings together so much fascinating history. And looking at the sunset at the Washington Monument, you can't help but think this ingenious idea of the general created a federal territory that rests between port towns to easily accommodate outgoing ships. Truly a remarkable design filled with an ambitious story. Washington DC is a unique experiment by the founding fathers a federal land containing bits and pieces of America's history, but molding its own character and identity, which it displays through its many neighborhoods. It creates such a varied experience that becomes one of America's best places for tourism. Whether you're searching for great museums or simply small town explorations, DC has a bit of everything for the curious adventure. I'm Jose and I thank you for joining me on this tour of Washington DC. If you like what you've seen today and want to continue following the tour, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share. If you want to see more in Washington, D.C., stay tuned for the following video. Until next time.